be his personal possession. Man, it just doesn't get any better than that. I've had some great times. I've had some wonderful experiences in my life, but none can compare to, to having a personal relationship with God. I mean, you just can't, you know, I don't, I don't understand what people, if, if people knew what they were missing, people jump out of p perfectly good airplanes to get this kind of feeling. They, they jump out of perfectly good airplanes, you know, just to try to get this feeling. And I have it, and I'm on the ground, amen? Yeah, I like that. That's some good stuff right there. So I think, I think we ought to do a little bit better job of being a little bit more excited about it. I think if that, that's contagious. Anything is exciting, like, whoa, what's all the fuss about? Right. But then, you know, if you're, if you're watching somebody and they're doing this, you're not even going to, chances are you may not even ask how they are because they might tell you. Right? We, we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen. I mean, we've got stuff to be excited about. More than anybody else on the planet. We've got more to be excited about. So let's take our Bibles and go over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I hope you are too. It's always wonderful to be in the house of God and, and, and meet with the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 10 and we'll just read down to verse 14. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at uh, Iconium, and at, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured be out of them, uh, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live uh, godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now listen, there's a lot, there's a lot that's in here. Uh, he's writing, Paul's writing Timothy, he's saying, listen, you've known my doctrine, my manner of life, you've known all of my persecutions uh, that I've suffered in this place and that place, everywhere he went, there was, there was issues and he pretty much was abused by mankind, and, but he, he says, listen, all who are going to live godly in Christ Jesus, that should be an expectation, because you shall, you're going to get that. You'll suffer persecution. Evil men uh, and those that are seducers, they're going to get worse and worse. They're going to deceive. They're being deceived and they're deceiving others. They, you see, in order to remain a deceiver, you have to keep deceiving yourself. So they're deceived and deceiving others as well. All right? But he says, out of all of this, out of all this stuff that, you, that I'm telling you, all these things that sound bad, that sound like you might want to walk away, that sound like you may not want to be have much to do with the ministry of people, continue thou in what you've learned. Don't stop. Don't give up in, in what you've learned and that you can be assured of because of who you've learned it from. Don't do it. Don't stop. All right, and so uh, that's a, that's kind of what we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about contrasting the times uh, this morning. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for these who have come. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine outside, Lord, uh, and the wonderful feeling in our hearts, Lord, uh, in this service as you're here with us. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome your presence. Uh, we welcome the Holy Spirit as he comes and, and, and teaches us 
uh, from the word of God, Lord, and, and will speak to our hearts even in, this, in these few moments that we have left in our service. So, Lord, have your will and your way. Please encourage us today. Please help us, Father, to, to see the, con uh, the contrasting uh, in the times and help us to, uh, to give ear to those things, Lord, that you would have for us this morning. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And it's not any secret that the world is in trouble. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think you have to go very far to understand the times in which we live, uh, which are both scary and exciting at the same time. You can't say they're not scary because you would not be human to not be scared in the times in which we live, but they are exciting for the child of God because you're watching the Bible come to life in the world in front of your eyes in 2022. It's been happening, all right? And we all know uh, what time it is according to the prophecy in the Bible. The Lord's coming. We that are saved are getting out of here. We're blowing this popsicle stand. Yeah, I like it too. I used to I used to crack up all the time at my at, at college because they were always so funny. My my one professor he was hilarious. Uh, his name was Doctor Sawyer. And I, every time you'd ask him a question, you say, "Oh, you know how you doing? How you doing, preacher?" You would get the same answer. He said, "I'm just sitting around waiting to get sucked out of my tennis shoes." Every time, and, and I don't care how many times I heard him say it, I cracked up because it's hilarious to think about that, but that will literally happen one day if you happen to be wearing tennis shoes at the time. If you're not a tennis shoe wearer, then whatever you're in, you're going to come out of. If you're barefoot, don't even worry about it. You'll come out of your skin. <laughs> but we can see that the, the time is coming, as one man uh, once said, and I, I like that. He says, we've quit looking for the signs and we're listening for the shout. So I think that's about where we, that's, that would really sum up where we're at in Christianity is we're stopping the, oh, is this a sign and that's a sign. No, we're just waiting for the shout. We're waiting for the trump of God and the shout of the archangel and the, and the, and the trump of God. and the day, We're all going up. We're listening for the shout. And uh, those of us that are, uh, you know, older and, and on up and well from older, I'm, I'm going to put myself as older and then well stricken in years. Okay? So... We're gonna we're gonna just be gentle with that curve because I know that that's that's a curve that without the Lord's help I will be treading on one day. But we are, you know, I I've I've often I never thought I mean, and I, we've been hearing it for a long time, and a lot of people that that's what you'll hear. I've been hearing that all my life, preacher. I've been hearing that the Lord's coming back all my life, and He's not here yet. Well, it's not the fullness of time. He will come when it's exactly time for him to come. All right, he's not going to come earlier than the scheduled time. He's not going to come later, thank God, than the scheduled time, right? But that's what it, it is happening. We see all the fulfillment of Scripture throughout, throughout the Bible. We see all these things that are happening. Now, we that are older, we understand changes that have taken place in our country. Uh, we understand, uh, you know, and some, some people won't know the blessings of, of I mean, even in my age, it, it, you know, I'm 46, and in my lifetime, just in my lifetime, I have witnessed such a change in the country as a whole. Like, and, and you know, some people growing up now are not going to know what it used to be, and then they just think that this is what it is or how it should be. It isn't. How it should be is how it was. And so 
uh, we, we, we understand that. We can see those things. Uh, it's a sad fact that you've got to deal with. It. Now, in the light of all that is prophesied, the Holy Spirit commands us to continue in the things which we've learned and been assured of, knowing who, that we've learned them. And I find no better advice to give than what God gave. That's exactly what we need to do, is to continue. All right? You need to continue in your faith. You need to, there's a lot, we could just stop, right? We could make a whole series on just continuance. I mean, you, you just could, because we need to continue in, in everything that we've been taught. Everything. Not leaving anything aside, which means we ought to continue to come to church. We ought to continue to pray. We ought to continue to try to reach somebody else for the Lord. We ought to continue to have faith, to continue to do all these things. Uh, that we've been taught. And sometimes, you know, sometimes we need to be taught new lessons uh, uh, to remind us of what things used to be and how, and how what was the, the expectation uh, that is there. God's expectation of a Christian has not changed at all. The Word of God has not changed at all. It is written. It is here that is what God said. He's not changing his mind or his word. Now, uh, it takes a realization, of course, of what God's uh, of what God has blessed and, and, and a resolve to continue in him. Right? It, it's simple, but yet people we know and love have done uh, almost everything other than that. And I believe that every believer has got to make that personal choice. Uh, and then uh, the members of the local church have to take a corporate one as well. Now, remember, all these different changes that you've seen in churches all across, that all started with individual choices, and then it, then it became a collective choice together. Okay? It didn't just, they didn't just wake up and change everything. It, it, there were people that were making this a way of life and these things. Oh, you know what? Uh, we don't need the Bible. We'll just, you know, have inspirational quotes or we'll just, you know, they want to focus on fellowship. Nothing wrong with fellowship. We need fellowship. But it's not what the whole ball hangs on. Okay? It's not the most important thing. And therefore, it should not be uh, put in that kind of light. For, for, for anyone, but, you know, I made my own personal choice a long time ago uh, when the Lord called me into the ministry. I, you know, I, I made a choice. I made a choice that I was going to go in the ministry and that if I was going to bother to go in the ministry, I would stay with what I saw. And, you know, and, and the problem, and, and I brought a message one time uh, because the, the king right after Solomon didn't, didn't take the advice of Solomon's uh, wise counsel. He went to his friends that he grew up with. And, you know, that is the problem that's going on in our world today. These, these people will never seek out older counsel or because it's too archaic. It's, you know, old school. Uh, it's just, it's old fashioned and there's old attached to everything because that's what, that's what they think it to be. But listen, if it ever was right, why is it not right now? If it was ever good and it ever worked, why isn't it working or good now? We don't need to change. People are trying to change the Bible to fit them instead of letting the Bible change them to what God wants them to be. So those, we all have to make those kinds of choices. We got to, you know, it's, it's more than, and it's, it's very important because your whole life actually depends on what you choose to do with your spiritual life. Because what we do with ourselves spiritually will affect us in our physical and in our mental state and what we choose and where we go, even right down to the careers we pick or, you know, the spouses that you pick, all, it's, all that's hanging on those things. And it plays a much bigger role than people let on. 
They want to take care of you physically. They want to take care of you emotionally. They want to take care of you those ways. But the spiritual ones, the spiritual need is the one that is the greatest of them all. They don't understand the full ramifications of letting a spiritual life go because the rest of it is going to tank. This spiritual life, now we know that by Jesus, the Bible says, by him all things consist. That means they're held together, right? So, in a spiritual sense, this, your spiritual life is the your spiritual life is the also the glue that holds the rest of it together. Your physical, your emotional. You know what? When when you're burdened and and you can take the burden to the Lord and leave it there. Now that stress is not there. Now that problem isn't there. Now that sleeplessness isn't there. And that's, that's your physical. So your spiritual can help your physical or it can hurt it. If we don't pay attention to our spiritual lives or regard it at all, then it will, it will take its toll on us physically. You know, I believe that disease is more rampant because there's too many people that just have let their spiritual life not even matter to them. And all the stress, don't tell me, the, the science backs me up, folks. Stress kills. Stress brings on things. Tumors grow. All kinds of things happen because of stress. Heart issues, brain issues, spine, everything. Your whole body. Your body. God did not make you to be stressed out. He didn't make you so that you could take all this weight of the world and walk around with it. He made you. And he, it's his desire that you live a happy life. God wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. God wants you to have his joy. God wants you to pick up his worry load. What do you think God's worried about? Not too much. Not too much. Okay? He said, take my yoke upon you. And that yoke, and we're not talking about egg yolks, guys, just so you know. Just thought I'd throw that out there. That's what you call, that's what you call the doohickey that the animals have on their back and they pull the plow. You have to use doohickey if you're going to talk southern. It's just part of the lingo. It is a technical term, though. But Jesus said, he was, he was comparing that. He said, here, take, take mine. Take mine. My burden is light. Here, you take mine. Let, let me have yours. Let me, because you know what? As soon as he takes yours, it's going to be as light as his was. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I like that. You turn in your heaviness and you get something light in return. So there's not that much to be that wrapped up in, okay? We, we need to develop our spiritual life and care more about that because it actually does benefit you. You know, it can help blood pressure. It can help all kinds of different things. It can actually help you because you're less stressed, you're less... You're, you're less, you got two, you know, you got, you shut the windows and not as much as blowing through there now in the way, in the winds of trouble. It, all of this can be resolved by prayer, by faith, by trusting the Lord, by taking the burden, by leaving it there and accepting that lighter load. Come and bring a heavy load, walk away with the light one. Man, anybody like moving? I hate it. I would almost rather burn the house down and, and start over than to move anything. I'm at that place. I'm at that juncture. If you see smoke coming from that way, just know that I've had enough. <laughs> Why? Because you don't want to have to carry the heaviness. You don't want to have to. And, and then you've got the not so heavy, but it's awkward. 
Don't you hate the awkward loads? Then you just, oh, let's see here. Then you got to play Tetris getting it in and out of the doors, in the truck, in the other door, the other house, finagling that. And then if you got a, any plans for that thing going upstairs, you just get an axe and hack it to pieces, take it up in pieces. I really, I really, I'm a fan of that one. That's, that's definitely a less stressful time if, when you're doing that. Let the axe drop. But see, you know what? Everybody doesn't, we're not built to want to carry that heavy load. We, want, we need to carry the light load. God knows this already and has told us to take a lighter load, okay? So I want to, uh, uh, we all have to make that choice about our spiritual lives and put some importance on it because of the fact that it's very important and this affects me physically, this affects me emotionally. You know what? I, I, have, been, I have been in a place, I didn't think I was going to get calmed down. I didn't think I was going to, you know, be all right. But then when I spend time with the Lord, then I can calm down. I can I can breathe, I can calm down because then he'll because he'll take those things. Okay? So it helps me physically to to be spiritual. And you gotta be scriptural before you can be spiritual. All right. I wanna I will talk just to, there's two things I want to talk about. First of all was Timothy's spiritual assurance in verse 14. See, that's more important. Uh, that more important than knowing what you believe is knowing what you believe is right. Okay? And, and, and I know that sounds confusing, but it's, it's a lot better when you know what you're believing is right. And the only way we can know what we believe is right is because God is never wrong. And what God says is right. So for me to believe what God has said... I can have assurance, and so could Brother Timothy here, that God has said it, you've observed this, you know it to be true, and that makes it better, knowing that what you believe is right. Timothy knew what he believed because uh, the, the tense of hast been is past. All right, Timothy's a young pastor, and a pastor had better know what he believes. You better know that. Timothy knew his predecessors, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. It speaks of those that taught the word of God to him. You know, I've sat under sound, fundamental, Bible-believing men of God throughout my years uh, in, of spiritual growth. I've learned doctrine through teaching and preaching, along with personal study. Uh, everyone, and you know what I loved about Midwestern Baptist College? They weren't really just professors. They were pastors. They were pastors of churches. I can't tell you how many times that a, that a pastor would even have something happen on Sunday and on Monday in the class, he would, or Tuesday on the class, because uh, I was Tuesday and Thursday, I was a drive-in because I wasn't going to do the whole live there thing. But, uh, but you know, the, it would come out. It would come out and it would be like, this, and it would just what happened to line up with something that we were being taught. And as an illustration, we could get involved and know about problems that had happened. Now, the preacher would never call out anybody's name. He would never do that. He would just say, this has happened. He didn't even tell us when. But, but we were able to pull from that experience to kind of know what these guys deal with. Because nobody really knows what a preacher deals with. No, but you think you know. You don't. You don't have any idea. You don't have how many times that people have roast preacher for lunch. I mean, you don't understand that. People you want to get close to, and then they turn around and they and they and they'll talk you talk you down, and they'll 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 bash you. They'll do whatever. They'll cause problems. They'll cause problems with other people. There's, there's been so many things that have happened down through the years uh, of ministry for these men. Nobody really gets an idea of it. And it's, it's really a, a shame. And you would never think that it has that way, but, the, but it does. Now, the admonition was not to forget 
that what Timothy believed was right. You know, I've, I've been in church, I've gone to school and with and preach with good men who, who have changed over the years. And it tells me that they did either had no confidence in who taught them or, to, or just didn't believe the word of God. There are still people, even that claim to be fundamental Baptist people, preachers, that don't fully believe that hell is a literal place. They don't really believe it. They just say hell is separation from God, and they don't, they, don't, they don't account to the other 1,034 scriptures that talk about a literal hell for those that, uh, I, I, you know, they, they've changed. They didn't believe it, or they didn't value where they came from and what they believed. And, you know, uh, I've, I've even had that even as an assistant pastor, uh, I, and, and, and being in the, in the ministry and traveling around, <clears throat> it's, it was, I've experienced that, that people coming and sitting on pews and, 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 and different things like that while in disagreement with the pulpit. They're in disagreement with what's preached. God's not the author of confusion, and their sitting there was not God's doing. And I wouldn't sit under a pastor that thought if I, that I thought was preaching false doctrine. I would not sit under that person. I would not be there if I did not agree with what was going on. If I did not agree with the doctrines that the preacher is preaching, you can just bet. Uh, you can bet, and it's a sure bet. I'm getting up and I'm walking out. I'm not staying there. I will not sit there and hear heresy. I will not sit there and when I know about what the Bible says and have somebody say, the Bible doesn't say that. You're a heretic and I'm not going to sit under that. So, you know, that's, you know, if you're ever in a, in, a, in a place like that, maybe you're traveling somewhere, and our families had to do that too. Uh, we went to, uh, we went somewhere, I think it was Tennessee, and we stopped in a little Baptist church, and it was, it was just a wreck. It was an absolute wreck. We got up and we left. Because it was just nothing what it was, should have been. And so it wasn't right. And I'm not worried about disrupting something. I'm not going to get up and start yelling and disrupt the thing like that. I'm just going to get up, and I'm going to walk out, and I'm not going back. I'm not going to do that, and neither should you. You don't have to sit and listen to garbage. You don't have to sit and listen to things that are false. It's just going to mess you up. That's why you better watch out for TV preachers and radio preachers, because most of them aren't, aren't where the Bible is. And unfortunately, if you're not sound in the doctrines like we've been teaching, that's why we're spending more time on doctrines, so you can know a bigger spectrum of the doctrines uh, and, and be more sure because of what you're learning. That you don't sit there and watch things that, that, and then because then you go, oh, yeah, that, oh, okay, yeah. Because people will take things and they'll make something out of it. It, they'll take it out of context, they'll take it out of, uh, the, uh, of what it's saying, and they'll make something else out of it. And you have to watch out for that. That's why it's important for us to know what we believe. What does the book say? Okay? And I'm not just talking about preachers that are, you know, they don't dot their I's and cross their T's and do every little thing the way that you like. I'm talking about actual doctrinal preaching and teaching that they got the book wrong. Okay? They're getting it wrong. Don't stay there for that. Then, lastly, is Timothy's spiritual assets. Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. See, if they're right, if you learn them from godly men who were right, then continue in them. And there's a saying called, consider the source. Would to God we do a little bit more of that. Where is this coming from? Who is saying it? Is there anything to back it up? It's amazing how many people will, will, will share even stuff. And I had, a few years ago, I had somebody 
That, that it actually happened to me, and I never even thought about it. Uh, it was some kind of a some kind of a article, and I I didn't even read the whole thing. But what I did, I I I decided to share it. But I had somebody else. Uh, I it I mean it looked like it, it was something about uh, a ruling, uh, some kind of a ruling uh, against something. I don't even remember now what it was. But then somebody's like, well, I didn't see any article of the court document article thing on it where you know where are you getting it from and then I had I took it down and I'm like you know what that makes sense I didn't even think about that so here I I was I shared something that I thought because you know it was it was just one of those things oh hey hey here take a look at this but that that was not what I should have done I should have taken the time to read the whole thing and look to see if there was any kind of a source that I could check out. Where did they get this information? Otherwise, it's just somebody ranting, right? But if there was a a court doc ticket number or whatever that the that they have, I forget. I, I forget the the actual term. You probably I know you know it. You'll probably be like, yeah, it's actually called this. But uh, but anyway, there there there's every case is assigned its number and and then. You know, all of that. So make sure, check your sources before you share something because you don't know if that's actually legit or if it isn't. That, that really made me take back, and I don't share stuff very, very often, uh, but I definitely don't do it without reading the whole thing now and seeing and make sure, check the source. Uh, my wife is awesome at doing all of that. Anytime I, anytime I mention anything, she's like, uh, who put that out? And I'm like, oh, it's this. Oh, well, yeah, it's probably not true then. You better check them out. <laughs> That's why the Lord gives you a help meet, man. That's why. But it's, it's an important thing to check the source. Now, what is your source for your doctrine, for your knowledge? Where, what are those people like? How did they, how was their, their lifestyle? How, you know, did they present themselves? Nobody's perfect. I'm not saying, were they perfect? Were they, did they have little glowing halos and you're just expected wings to pop out at any time? I'm not talking about that. Are, are these God, godly people, are they somebody that you can trust with the information? Okay, and you, and you see it in the book and you've been explained to and you know these things and you've been taught these things then we can rest assured of who we've learned it. Because, you know, and that's why I generally use a lot of scripture when, I, when, I'm, uh, when I'm here, but we're kind of just hanging out right here. I do have a few scriptures coming up here for you. But it, it's an important thing that we, that we continue in the word. John 8, 31 then said, Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. To even be considered a disciple and a follower of Jesus actively, then you need to continue in the word. That's the Bible. We need to continue in the old paths. Jeremiah 6, 16, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. A lot of people do that. They'll flat out say, you know what? I ain't doing it. I ain't going to do this, this Christian thing. I ain't going to do this church thing. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to graduate into a Bible thumper. Well, that's sad. You know, they could, they could call me whatever they want to call me. They don't hurt me none. I know what I believe. I know where I learned it. I know the godly men I learned it from. And their, testi and their testimony in their life. And I can be assured because I've seen it and I've studied it. And everything that they taught me is plainly put there in the Bible by God for me and the Holy Spirit you know, he gets that holy two by four and hits you in the face with it to make you help help you along the way. Where would we be without that? 
Just, you just, just need a little love, just a little love tap. That's good. Don't you love how that bounced right back? That was good. We got to stand and continue in the old paths. We got to, we got to have sound biblical doctrine. That's where you got to continue. Second Timothy four two. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Which means if you're going to encourage, which is what exhort means, then you have to do it with long suffering and you have to do it with doctrine. And it's the same thing with reproving and rebuking. Those are not those uh, so easy to do sometimes, but we also need to do that with long suffering and doctrine. Because you know what? It doesn't do nobody any good to harp on them about something and you didn't bother to open the book and show them what the book said. Where, where's your source? Let them know your source. My source is the Bible. My source is God's word. That's what he says. And it's still your choice as to what you're going to do with it. But that's what God has to say about it. We need to continue in the amazing grace of God, Romans 4, uh, 5, 2, by whom also we have access by faith and to his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Wow, that's good stuff. We need to continue in love. Continue in love. John 15, 9, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love, that's saints, sinners, the local church, that's everybody. We ought to love everyone that way. Continue in separation. Yep, it's still in the book. First John 2.15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. There's worldliness and apostasy, ecumenism. There's all kinds of stuff. There's a lot we need to stay away from. You're in the world. You're not of it. We should be different because God wants us to be a difference so that it's easier for people. Now, isn't it, isn't it easier to see people when, when you know what it is? Like, um, for instance, the, we all used to be able to tell a cop from two miles away because they would have the, the big lights on the top. Remember those big, huge ones? You guys don't know that yet because now they don't even have lights. They're all like in the windows. They got really, they got really slick nowadays. But you would always see, and you would already have your speed adjusted beforehand, you know, if you were one of those kind of people. And, uh, <laughs> and, but you, it was easy to identify them. But now they don't want you to have that because they want to be able to make some money, right? They, they've got quotas to fill. They use, I knew of, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when I, I got a ticket one time. I have not gotten that many tickets in my life. But I went down, and I think I went to fight. It was something I was going to fight, a ticket, or I was down in the police station for something. And I literally saw the awards given for the quota of tickets. So I don't, don't, don't let them tell you. Don't you dare let them tell you that they don't have a quota. They do. And it was, it was against another precinct. They have active competitions between. Hence why they got rid of all their lights and put them like underneath the car. They've even taken police on the side off and just like watermarked them. They're slick and they want to hide in trees. <laughs> Several years back, you guys remember the motorcycle cop that was, uh, he was, I forget, was like 94. He was behind the tree in a motorcycle. <laughs> when will the madness end? But it makes it harder to see and recognize them. Now, you know, they, they, you could tell construction workers, right? How do you know it's a construction worker? Orange and the, the vest and, and they look like they've spent, you know, they look like they've spent tons of time in the sun and they're baked. They're baked. 
I, I hope they give them some kind of extra extra hazard, you know, cancer pay or something for being out in the sun that long. You spend a lot of time out there. But the high visibility vest, the orange, you know what it is. You can recognize that that is a construction worker. Even as kids, when we're, when we're playing and you're trying to get them to say, oh, what's that? Oh, cop. Oh, what's that? Oh, fire truck, you know. You identify it because you, you're, you're showed the images and you're being taught what it is so that you know one day if you ever needed to, you know, and I remember when I was taught what police are, uh, it was back in the day when it, if you need one, you know where to find one. That's a police officer. If, I, if, you, if we're ever out and we get lost, you know, and you see a police officer, go to the police officer. Okay, well, you know they have the, you know how they have all their stuff on, and you know back when they wear hats before they all went bald. Um, yeah, I know. I got to tread lightly on that one myself. But uh, but anyway, you know they used to wear the hats, and you would they had big old shiny, the shiniest badges, man. And it used to kill me when I did security because everybody, all the little kids, thought I was a cop. As a matter of fact, one mother was having trouble. She was with her son. Uh, she was with her son, and the son wasn't acting up. He wasn't acting right, you know, and she wanted, she said, can you talk to him? <laughs> well, I said, well, sure, I can. I'm thinking, this just this is the day maker right here. This is, I'm going in. I'm going in for it. So I, I put on my acting cap. What's going on there? You know, I got I got down. It's always better. It's more intimidating when you like get down in their face, and that's why if, if grown-ups ever do that stuff, you know what, what they're trying to do, trying to mess with you. I said so. Your mom tells me your uh, your mom tells me that you're not acting right. I said, do you know that this is a federal building? <laughs> do you know what Do you know what we do to kids that do that? You don't want to know. <laughs> I said, this is a big place. An eight concourse. I said, it's a mile from there to there. A lot of things can go wrong. You know, and I, the, I, oh boy, he, he just jerked a knot in his tail, man. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I said, listen, I said, I want you to just do me a favor. I want you to hang out with your mom. I know it may not seem cool but she's here for you. Stay with her mom and just be good. Get to your gate. Everything's going to be good. And, and I walked away and, and of course I'm trying so hard to not die laughing because <laughs> I totally pulled that over on that kid. I mean, it was great. And, and so, but it's because they made us at the time we had to wear the big shiny silver badge. I'm a security guy. Right, but you know, I'll help a mom in distress. I mean, that's just—I know what it's like, and I, I know how I've, I've done with my kids over the years. So I've—they've I've, had uh, the soul scared out of them a few times. But, but anyway, it's important that I said all that to say that I know that's a lot. I went over, and I usually don't. But it's important that people know that you're a Christian. Because the time is coming, I'm not going to say will come, it is coming, okay, when they're going to need to get a hold of somebody who's a Christian, and that may be their only clue is what they've seen on the outside, that you might, do, you know, that you go to church or they see you carry your Bible to church or whatever, they, we should be visibly different so that we stand out why do you think he says that we're a peculiar people we're going to stand out so that people know that we're christian so that we can be there to help them when they'll need it let's come for the invitation thank you for a few extra minutes of time